Mm, I have one question, another question in relation to the inverse. That's the one on the page 15. Uh, it's the connection between the inverse matrices and uh, and system of linear equations. In fact, the connection is really like it's important connection. It's like mm, especially especially when you when you go for like a deeper analysis of the system of linear equations, the inverse matrix is that's a key argument there. Inverse actually inverse matrix is a key thing in many actually many 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 analyses. Anyway. Uh, look what we can do if we have this concept of the if we if we can operate with the inverse matrix. Well, how we can solve the system easily if we know the inverse matrix of the inverse matrix of the associated associated with this with the system. Look at this. Uh, here I put I put the matrix A, which is the principal matrix of my system. So it's a matrix of coefficients. Look at this: two, four. That's the first row of your matrix, and negative one and seven. That's the second row of your matrix. If you have a metric like this, then your system, look how I can put my system. That's something we already saw before, this kind of notation for a system, for the system. Left-hand side of a system, AX equal right-hand side, which now I call a vector to negative 3, where X vector, it's the vector of my unknowns, X and Y. We actually, I introduced this notation for you um, a while ago. Uh, when we discuss systems of linear equations, at that stage, if you remember, I told you that this is just a piece of annotation. Take it as granted. Now, I can actually give you some more information in relation to this. In fact, this, this, when you write it like this, we think about this combination as the matrix product, the way we introduced the matrix product two lectures ago. If you think about this, this is true, that's what, 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 that, that's what happened, right? Because if you take this row, two and four, and if you multiply this row with this single column in this matrix, the way we do it when we multiply matrices, it will be 2 times x, 4 times y, and you plus in between, right? That's the left-hand side here. If you say take the second row in this matrix, and you combine it with this column in this matrix, I refer to the sector as a matrix now, it will be negative 1 times x plus 7 times y. It's the second left-hand side here. So... At the stage when I introduced this, I said this is just a notation because at that stage we didn't really discuss with you the matrix product, but in fact, this is a very nice, very simple matrix product of 2 times 2 matrix and 2 times 1 matrix, which is a vector x. Now, as soon as we realize this, look what we can do. If I have an inverse of my matrix, look at this. If I have an inverse, what I can do, I can multiply this identity, which is the vector identity, or which is a, you can think about the vectors as matrices too. So this is a matrix identity. You have a matrix on the left-hand side. You have a matrix on the right-hand side. I can multiply this left-hand side and the right-hand side with the inverse, can I? If I do that, that's how my left-hand side will look like. Now, knowing that A is the inverse for, I mean, this is the inverse for the matrix A, we can now multiply this way, this, this pair first, if I multiply this pair first, the identity matrix will come up. The identity matrix will come up here, and this is the right-hand side of my, of, my, of my equation, right? If I, I multiply the left-hand side by the inverse, here it is. I multiply the right-hand side by this inverse. Here it is. Now, this pair, A inverse and A, they return the identity. The identity matrix, I don't have it here, times x is just x itself. Remember, if you multiply any matrix by the identity, it will be the same matrix, and you end up with a solution like this. Yeah. So again, I just, like, I use this benefit of the, of the matrix notation for my system. It's the left-hand side, and this is the right-hand side. I multiply both sides by the inverse. The left-hand side ends up to be just x vector. The right-hand side is the answer. Effectively, we do have the answer now. We can finish, we have, we have to do the, the computation, of course. Uh, here's the computation of the inverse. Here's the computation of the inverse. Again, this is in the, I'm sure this is in the, in the solution helper. Look at this, this is my matrix. This is the identity. I do the row echelon form, or reduce row echelon form, and this is the inverse of my A. Here's a summary of that. These steps, which can see with these steps, which can which are which I which I conceal with dots, they are in a solution helper, and that's they all in the same line, they are in the same 
the same way we, do, we, we did it with the other examples. All we have to do now to find the solution for this x, all we have to do, we have to multiply this vector by the inverse matrix. If I multiply that, it will be x vector. Look at this. I multiply this first row by this column, so it will be 7 times 2 plus negative 3 times negative 2 on 9. This time I gave the full arithmetic. That's the result of that multiplication. And at the bottom, you will have this row multiplied by the same column like this, and that's the result of that multiplication. If you do the arithmetic, that's the answer we have for my unknown sex and y. It's not the easier way to solve this system because when you do the row echelon form, I mean, on both occasions, if you do the system like a, in a regular way with the row echelon form or with the inverses, on both occasions, you still have to do this part, the part of row echelon form thing. But with the inverses, it just gives you more structure. It gives you more structure, more understanding why, why actually we do row echelon form sometimes. Uh, of course, if you don't have the inverse, if you don't have the inverse, you, you, this method will no longer work. And if you don't have the inverse, the only way to analyze the system is again the Gaussian elimination process, which we started with you earlier. We can, of course, we, we can of course do double check. Let's just do double check. Here's my system. That's the solution. So 13 on 9 and negative 2 on 9. If I put this in, 2 times 13 is 26. Take, take uh, yes, 26. Take. Uh, take 8, 26 take 8 is 18, on 9 it's 2. First one works. Uh, this one is negative 13. I'm I just compute the enumerator. It's negative 13, negative 14. 13 and 14 is 27. If you divide by 9, it's negative 3. So this is truly a solution, although we found a solution in a different way. Any questions? This, of course, works for, for yes, please. Um, but I'm just wondering, um, what you've relied on that is not the inverse times A to equal the identity. Yeah. Um, isn't, isn't what you're actually doing is multiplying the inverse times AX? Isn't that different? Yeah, but if you remember, there was this property with, uh, which, which is in relation to the matrix multiplication. I call this associativity property. If you multiply like this, this is the same as if you multiply like this. So here your A, C is your inverse, so if, if I apply this identity here, so actually it's a good observation. The left-hand side here, it's, it's here, so you, you look at something like this. You have your A inverse, and you multiply with the A times X, right? But according to this identity, you can put the brackets like this, A inverse times A, and then X. You see that? So implicitly, I use this associativity property, which is true for matrices, but not commutativity. We didn't swap anything around. Yeah, thanks. That's a good question. Especially there will be a few examples in the yellow book, which you have to do this kind of tricks anyway. Uh, any more questions? 